Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to be going over painting your laser engravings. So let's get to it. Now you might have seen my short video of my Alice in Wonderland on the live edge. So here it is engraving and here it is completed for engraving. Now before I sand it down because you will see some scorch marks on it, even I used air assist as well, but you will get some scorching. I'm actually going to seal the engraving part and I figured I might as well just seal the engraving part and then I can sand it down in just one fell swoop. So I'm going to take my transfer tape and this is paper transfer tape. You can get it from any sign supply store or online and I'm going to mask off the areas that I do not want sprayed with a clear. So I'm just taking an oil-based spray can of clear. You don't need anything too expensive. And I am using oil-based because I'm going to be using water-based paint and water-based clear. By sealing your engraving, you're able to paint over it and you won't have that scorching color bleed through, especially in whites. If you've ever tried to uh, paint over anything that's engraved with white paint, um, you think you'll have enough coats on it, but once you put a clear on it, you will have the browns bleed through. So this just seals your engraving. So before the clear coat dries, which it dries very quickly, I quickly peel off the tape. And this is, for example, a laser engraving that I made sure I sealed and painted in white. And then I gave it a water-based clear coat so you can see it didn't take the tannins of the engraving. So I waited for my clear coat to totally dry and then I used an orbital sander with a 220 grit sandpaper and I sanded down to where I no longer saw any scorch marks. So that way I knew the clear was off of the top surface of my wood so it would be able to take the paint that I am going to be doing very shortly. Okay, so I have my live edge set up on my Lazy Susan, which is really handy if I need to spin it around. I have my magnifying glasses, my paint brushes, and something I'm gonna show you because I wear glasses. The magnifying glasses like to slip. And it actually cuts my nose because this edge here is really sharp. So I will take a Band-Aid and put it on my nose. Now these are the brushes I love to use. These are the Oriental Art Brushes and I think I just got these either KW Surplus or Dollarama sometimes carries them. And I am just using the Deco Art acrylic paints that I also get from Dollarama. Now you don't need a lot of paint and plus it tends to dry quickly, so just do a dab. Now never leave your brushes stored in a jar like that. These are brand new brushes and I just had them in there for the few seconds but uh, definitely don't leave your brushes in the jar because you will lose the point and you will also get a bend in the bristles. So I'm actually going to take quite a bit of water and I'm going to thin out that acrylic paint. Now it might be too thin where you might have to dab it with a tissue just like I did there and you might need to add a little more pigment but just remember, it's a lot easier to add layers of paint than it is to take them away. So if you need to do it in layers, which is basically what watercolor is, it really gives a, a really nice effect. So I am went in with the blue and I'm also going to be going in with the yellow. And I mean, I think it works and looks. Once you see the completed project, it looks a lot better than just starting out with a green by mixing it on top. So of course, I like to start with the eyes and my most <laughs> I'm most excited actually about painting the Cheshire Cat. I am the Cheshire Cat fan. Go figure, eh? So this, all my colors that I'm choosing is actually based on the Cheshire Cat and of course, the rabbit is going to be white, white rabbit. And Alice, of course, it's a blonde in white wearing blue. So all my colors are based off those colors. 
But again, I like to start with the eyes because the eyes are the windows to the soul. So I like to put a lot of work into the eyes. So you'll see that I will mix more water into the paint and then I will actually roll my brush. I rolled it on the plate there to get the point back and make sure I didn't have too much paint. And uh, yeah, if you're not sure how much paint you've got on your brush and you're just testing it out, well, you can use a piece of paper there to see how thin you actually have it. Test it on a piece of paper first. So I've got Alice's eyes done and I'm now going in to do the rabbit's eyes. Now, rabbit's eyes are pink, and I I think that actually looks kind of freaky for a white rabbit. And uh, so I wanted to use a little bit of different color, so I'm going in with the orange and the reds just to give it a little more life. And don't worry, we're going to fast forward through a lot of parts, so it will speed up here. I just wanted to make sure I was going over the basics so that you can kind of follow along. So you'll see I'll use quite a bit of num number of colors, but by layering them will really give your painting a lot of oomph. So here I'm actually going in with a little bit of brown too to shade the eye under the lid. So you'll do a little bit of shading and that just gives like a three dimensional look to the eye. Nothing is a flat color. So I'm so excited because I'm finally starting my Cheshire Cat. So you'll see I start with the whites, adding just a little bit of pink at the time because your typical cat will have white around the nose and the muzzle and the eyes. And so I'm going to start with a little bit of pink, work it out, and then eventually I will work to a darker pink. Now, each and every time that you see me go towards that plate, I'm actually adding more and more water to the paint as well. So I am not using straight paint at any time. I am really watering it down quite a bit. Now, as the paint dries, it may lighten on you. Um, so don't panic. Just go over it. Once you do this a few times, you will find the method that works best for you. And uh, of course, so it might look dark. You might have gone over it too much. Let it dry first, you know, in case you do have to sand it a little bit. Again, it's easier to start with it light and then add more layers if you need to. So now I'm going in with my bubblegum pink and I'm darkening those areas up and boop. I fast forwarded a bit. So now I'm going in with my purples. So any of the shadowing that I'm doing, you'll see behind items. That's how you figure out where you're going to be putting your shadowing and to make it more dimensional looking. So I started with a purple. And I will go over some of his stripes, of course. And this is just going to give definitely a more dimensional look. So we're going to get all the shading done in here. Because of course my Cheshire cat just can't just be pink. Okay, time to add some blues. And you're about to see this fella really start to pop. And of course, nothing is a straight white. You might have to add a little bit of baby blue for shadowing in that as well. So of course, underneath the chin there with the white, I added a bit of blue for shadowing. And I think you can tell by just adding different layers of the coloring of the paints, what a difference it makes. And I found out as it was starting to dry, it was starting to lighten a bit in some areas. 
So I'll just go over that again. Now we're gonna go in and do the white rabbit. Of course, again, nothing is a straight white. So I am going to be adding some baby blues in areas that I know will be have some shadowing. And it's a lot easier to start with, you know, the baby blue in some areas and then working the white over top of it. So of course my first key elements Again, the Cheshire Cat and the White Rabbit. I want to do them first, and then I can choose all the other colors that I know will complement what I'm using currently. Now I am going to jump ahead shortly here, but you'll see now I am taking in some blues there and shadowing what's going to be roses. So we know the roses are sitting on the top, so that's where I figure out my shadowing. Okay, we had to jump a little bit ahead there. I ended up losing all my footage for when I did the Mad Hatter's hat, the mushrooms, and the timepiece there. And you can see that I'm starting my base red of my roses. Uh, apparently, my eye cloud was too full of videos, so I thought everything that was being recorded was re being recorded, and it wasn't. So apologies for losing that footage. So I'm doing my base colors now for my roses. And that's all completed. So now I'm going in with the darker red. And it's a lot easier if you look carefully, you'll see where the lowest petals or the, I'm trying to word this right. How do I word this right? In order to do your shadowing, find the petals that you believe are to the most back part of the rose and you work in from there it's a little easier to see on this rose that i'm working of course the very back petals i colored in the full reds first and now i'm just using just a little bit in areas so that i can use like a graduated coloring to give it a more realistic and two-dimensional three-dimensional look so here's a good time to go over color theory primary colors are your red yellow and blue your secondary colors are what you get from taking your primaries and mixing them together your tertiary colors is taking a secondary and adding some primary to it and that will give you your tertiary colors but most importantly complementary colors are what's opposite each other from the color wheel. And using these colors in combination will make any colors that you're using pop. Tints are achieved by adding either black or white to your colors. And again, anything opposite on the color wheel are complementary colors. So I finished the leaves with a lighter green. It was an apple green. Now I'm going to go in my darker green add my shadows there and then I'm taking the light blue adding the shadows to her shirt sleeve that I've already painted white so anything that I've painted white throughout the graphic here I'm going to be adding a lot of shadowing to and of course underneath her shirt can you see uh, <laughs> I think I just whizzed by there on the left-hand side. <laughs> Crazy cats. So I'm adding, you know, some darker blues again. Shadowing. It's really going to give any of your graphics the appearance of depth. And you'll see that I've already actually painted her hair. And I started with a white adding yellows slowly. And uh, now I just want to take the brassiness out of the yellow and if you've ever seen uh, blondes of course you know it doesn't look very dimensional what's the word I'm looking for adding highlights that's it so of course you um, any typical blonde you're going to see roots with that too so I'm just going in with a very light kind of brown uh, goldy color 
And I'm just going to take the brassiness of the blonde down. Because it right now, to me, it just looks too yellow. And this will just give it a more natural appearance. And I'm using that as shading as well. Okay, so now I'm actually going in with white. And this is a very fine brush. And I'm adding my highlights. So, of course, the highlights would be to the top of the head, to the front part of the face, and, of course, any hairs that appear to be the closest to you visually. Okay, this is where you'll add your highlights. And, of course, I've already added the highlights to the cat's eyes, and the rabbit's eyes, and Alice's eyes. And I did lose the footage for when I was doing her face. There it is, already all completed. Sorry, once again. Um, so what I did was use flesh color with a little bit of white, not a lot, and uh, used very thin down peaches and pinks for her cheeks, for her lips. And remember I started with the lightest color of her lips and then used the shadowing for the lower pout of the lip. Now, personally, I felt like the graphic was just kind of floating on the live edge. So this I added with just water droplets of the paint, very thin, used a straw to blow it out. Okay, it's time to clear coat. Now, first I'm going to take a very soft bristled brush. Not totally soft, but a lot softer than most of the brushes that you'll get at any general hardware store. And I will give that a dust off after it's dried for at least 24 hours. Now I am using the Verithane water-based outdoor clear. You'll stir it, never shake this because you don't want to put air bubbles into it. You'll see it's a very thin paint. And here's a pro tip right here. Move the can of paint around with you so you're not reaching over your artwork and possibly dripping and missing seeing any drips that have fallen on what you have already clear coated. So give yourself lots of space and work that can around. So this is actually actual speed of how I am clear coating it. So you'll see I use the very side of the brush. You know, I do put on a fair amount of the clear because it's going to seep down into the engraved areas. I will go in a number of directions but when I go back over any areas, I'm very, very lightly pushing and pulling the paint. So I've already got a coat on the top, and now I'm starting to do the edges of the live edge. And you'll see the wood grains really starting to pop. So I will get that done. And you'll see I start away from the edge because if you hit the edge, you're actually taking the clear coat from the brush and it'll run underneath the work. It's a lot easier to start away from the edge and then work your way back to it. So you're going to let that clear coat, the first coat, completely dry where you do not see any milkiness. It has to be completely clear. Don't panic if your first coat seems rough to you because you've added moisture to the fibers. You can't sand it quite yet. So I'm just showing you a hardware brush. Don't ever use this for a clear coat. You will get lines. I find the bigger, thicker brushes hold too much clear coat and you will get so many lines, but you also get bubbling. So don't overwork that clear coat when you're brushing it on. I'll give at least two coats before I go in and hand sand any rough spots. Now, where you've painted, you'll be surprised that it's very, very smooth in appearance. And uh, I will just use that brush to dust off and I will do at least two to four clear coats. But remember, don't sand until after your second clear coat and do that very sparingly. And Wonderland is completed. So this is four coats of clear coat. 
And I'm just going to zoom in so you can see just with just with basic layering, acrylic paint, you don't need any fancy watercolors. You can get that effect of watercolor. And she's all done. So I hope this video helps and inspires. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much. Now go create.